Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday. I'm going to reposition my screen here. So it is 10 a.m. here Pacific time. It's 1 p.m. out there on the East Coast. And welcome to the hour of power. <laughs> and this is something that I, um, I felt really compelled and really drawn to do last week. I was, I was having a conversation about empowerment and about what we're doing here and as far as, you know, with Synergy of Empowered Women and what I'm doing in my business and how everything is overlapping and, and flowing, right? Like the signs are there and it feels good and you're in the flow and, and things start to come together when you're in flow. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be really, really cool if every once in a while we had a reminder of the way things should should feel, right? Of, of how we could be feeling at any given moment. And then I went to a yoga class on Sunday and bless her heart, <laughs> the instructor that I go to on Sunday morning, she's so sweet and she's just, she's just all about the love. Like she's just all about being in love with, with yourself and with the world and everything. And, and I leave there feeling like, like I'm looking through kind of my rose colored lens in a way, but, but she is a wonderful, she's a, one of those people who is always there with the reminder of of coming back to the now, of coming back to what's real. So I wanted to spend some time today with you guys, hopefully to remind you about how you can always step back into your power. Like when you are feeling super stressed out, when you're feeling like everything is out of control, when you're feeling like you are just spinning in the world, there's always a way to come back. There's always a way to come back. And so I wanted to, to put on this little webinar today. And then also in the end, I want to invite you into a group that I'm going to be starting next week that is all about this. And it's like much more intimate. So full disclosure, I have someone helping me with this webinar <laughs> because there again, you can't do anything. Well, I can do very little by myself. So my friend, Tad Stevens, is in the background helping me with this webinar. So, because as we went on, there were, I wanted to get some feedback from you. Like there are actual questions that I have put together that every, I don't know, like 10 minutes or so, five or 10 minutes, I wanna post up on the screen and, and it'll give you a chance to type into either the chat box or the comments, wherever you're watching this you give me some feedback, right? Like help me to answer the questions. And, um, and also Tad is going to help me manage comments, right? So I can't really do everything at once, like I said, but together we certainly can. So what I want, what I would love to know too is, is who is on. So as you come on to this webinar, whether you're finding it through Facebook, whether you're signed up through the Zoom link, like it's streaming to a couple different places. I would love to know who's watching and where you are. So Tad's going to help me with that. And every once in a while, I'll just ask him a question. So don't feel like I'm talking to my imaginary friend. <laughs> I am actually talking to someone. So, oh yes, yeah, see Tad is in charge of the chat box. See, he's all over it. Um, so Tad, is there a way if they're watching this, if they're streaming it on Facebook, that they can join the webinar itself? Do they just hit the carolynmall.com backslash go thing? Uh, I will try to get a link out there here in just a second that they can oh. join the webinar. All right, cool. Because that way the chat is easy to see. Cool. All right. Oh, hey, Beth is here. All right, good. So now I can see the chat box and that's very fun because now we can interact. So, um, so Beth is here from Ventura and I'm also in Ventura, by the way. So, like I said, there's, there's three main parts that I really wanted to touch on today. Hey, Twinkle's here. Yay. All my people are coming here. That's good. That's good. Um, so there's this idea of power also that I want to talk to you about today. And 
when I wrote down the hour of power, right, there's, I want to address a really broad concept here that I don't know if that it gets talked enough about. There's kind of two different kinds of power. There's personal power and then there's social power. So when you think about the, the difference between feeling powerful or feeling powerless, both of those things can be equally debilitating, I think, if taken to, if taken to the extremes. So social power has to do with having resources, like having external resources, like maybe, you know, you've, you've got access to, you've got access to social media, you've got access to money, you've got access to resources, you've got access to, like I said, sort of external sources of dominance, right? It's easy to exert dominance over other people when you have amassed social power. Think our president for a second. No, okay, stop thinking about him. So then there's the social, or then there's personal power, right? So personal power, in my opinion, is very different than, than social power because personal power where it comes in when you are able to access limitless internal stores. Like, so you have limitless inner resources at your disposal. And what I wanted to do today is to start having a conversation about how to access those limitless inner resources, which, which allow you to sort of escape the feeling of being dominated by other people or other facets of the world that do exert dominant social power. So does that, hopefully that makes sense. So thinking about power in the world, power as we see it, power as we experience it, social, personal. And what I really wanna focus on today is cultivating that sense of personal power. So how do you do that? <laughs> so another broad point that I wanted to bring up before we go into the, the details is when you are feeling powerful, versus feeling powerless. Typically, you're focused on one of two things. People who generally have a sense of personal empowerment oftentimes are focusing on the benefits of any given situation in their life. They're focused on what is the good that can come out of anything. And that kind of energy where you're looking on the bright side, so to speak, is one of these things that will continually move you forward. You have a goal, there is something in mind, and you can see the benefits of just about any scenario that is involved with it. As opposed to the feeling of powerlessness, which is more focused on the potential costs to you, the potential barriers, the potential costs of any given scenario. So those kind of, those kind of feelings typically make people avoid, avoid new situations, avoid a conversation, avoid speaking their truth, avoid showing up because you're worried about something, a cost. Generally, it's usually a fear of being judged or a fear of failing or a fear, 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 right? So, so this is where my yoga teacher is so great because she is always the omnipresent reminder of the love versus the fear, right? And if anybody here has studied A Course in Miracles, if anybody here has ever listened to Marianne Williams speak or even Gabby Bernstein, right? They're all, they're all speaking from A Course in Miracles, which tells us very, very clearly that there's only two things. There's only two things that we can be choosing from at any given moment in our life. And those two things are always love or fear. So, when we think about this in terms of the love versus fear dichotomy, this, this kind of goes into that, into the spirituality nest of our conversation today. And I had actually, um, I had actually asked Tad to post questions in a certain order, but um, when we think about love versus fear, we think about 
what we believe in as far as like your personal cosmology, shall we say, like what you believe as far as God, as far as a higher power, as far as what, like, does the universe have your back? Those kind of things. Because if you do, if you do believe in a higher power, if you believe in God, if you, if you have some kind of spiritual practice that is in place, you typically believe that only things that God created are real and God is love. So the only thing that is real are things that come from love, things that come from God, things that are here reminding us of our source. Everything else is a story that we made up, typically an ego story. And that, those are the fear-based emotions, right? So fear-based emotions, anything that has to do with anger, frustration, disappointment, comparison, attachment, all of these things point to fear-based emotions, thoughts, and actions. Because none of those things are from God, right? Like none of those things are real. All of those things are transient emotions or thoughts that we're having based on what is going on around us. So the first way to really come back into your power is to understand why you could be feeling powerless. And so during those times of, of fear or frustration or anger or doubt or whatever the case may be, you have to ask yourself the, the first question here, which is, is it true? Is what I'm feeling, is what I'm experiencing actually true? Or is this a story that I am coming up with in my own mind? And to do that, we have to learn how to take a break. We have to learn how to create space in between when something happens to, uh, to us, around us, near us, and when we actually decide on an appropriate reaction to that thing. So, so Tad, I, this would kind of be a great time to put up the polling questions for spirituality. I don't know if you can do that out of order because I put them in a different order, but Absolutely. Maybe. I will do that right now. Okay, the poll is up. If you would, please just let us know what you think. It takes a minute to read them because I'm wordy. <laughs> <laughs> when you contemplate spirituality, do you have a firm belief system in practice? Um, continually search for meaning, but you're not sure about the higher power. Reject the notion that there's anything beyond what we can see with our senses. Okay, if we could give one more, two more votes, that would be super. Give another two, three seconds. Two, three, one. Awesome. Super, and share the results. So that's cool. So, so most of the people on here looking right now are actually have a firm belief system in place or they're searching. So no one here is completely rejecting the notion <laughs> that there's nothing beyond us. So that's good, I know who I'm talking to. Um, I'm gonna try to exit it, okay, good. So, so, so thinking about that, right? And going back to the whole idea of personal power versus social power. Now you see how all of this kind of comes around to play because there are things outside of us, other people's stories, other people's activities, other people's egos, other, other, other. And that is what tends to consist of social power, things that we perceive that we're comparing ourselves to. So, so taking a step back from all of that and thinking about the fact that we have limitless inner resources to draw on, but a lot of it starts with, uh, whatever we have as a firm spiritual belief. So, okay, so moving on to the next kind of thing that I wanted to talk about is learning how to then become your authentic self, right? <laughs> that I think a lot of people are searching still for their meaning, um, their their sense of authenticity that isn't colored by trying to fit in, trying to achieve a certain something that is deemed societally valuable. I actually brought a quote, I brought a book 
because I like to be prepared for you guys. I brought a book that has a really cool quote from an author and civil rights leader, Howard Thurman. And this is what Howard Thurman writes. This is not from me, this is from a book. There is something in every one of you that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. It is the only true guide you will ever have. If you cannot hear it, you will spend all of your life, spend your days and the ends of strings, on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. So, and we've also heard quotes from people like, you know, if you don't, if you don't make your, if you don't, if you don't make your way in the world, somebody else will make it for you. Like if you're not going to build your own life, somebody else is going to build it for you. You're going to be building somebody else's, whether it comes to a business or whatever the case may be. But I love this quote because I really feel like it's true. Like we're all listening for the sounds of the genuine in ourself. And when that comes through as that as that being tapped into your limitless inner resources, we feel good, we feel authentic. And part of that is feeling congruent, right? Our thoughts and our feelings and our actions are all lined up. And that's the secret to personal empowerment, right? Because here's the other thing that I wanted to tell you is that everything is energy, right? So we know for a fact that everything is energy. And, and when we look at our bodies, when we look at the world around us, but like, let's think about our bodies for a second because we all have a body. Your body is this form, is this shape that's made up of different systems, right? Your cardiovascular system, your respiratory system, etc. All of your systems are made up of organs, heart, lungs, etc. Then all of your organs are made up of specific tissues, lung tissue, kidney tissue, liver tissue, right? All of those tissues are made up of cells. All of those cells are made up of atoms. And now with science, we can actually look and study the human body at a subatomic level. We can look and see everything at a subatomic level and guess what's there? Nothing, space. 99.9% .9 of an atom is just space. <laughs> and so the old way of thinking, like from Newtonian physics of electrons spinning around a nucleus and everything having a shape and a form is becoming very quickly outdated as we have these new technologies and fMRIs and things that can actually measure energy and assess quantum fields, right? So we know that everything is energy. Let's not argue that. But when you show up into a room, we feel your energy. We know who you are by the energetic vibe that you are giving out. And so when you show up into a space, whether it's your house or a restaurant or your work, or on a date or to whatever you're doing, you are showing up emitting a certain frequency that we all can feel. <laughs> and if your words and your actions do not line up to us with that energetic vibe that you are putting off, we think you're lying. We don't trust you for some reason. There's something a little off, maybe we can't quite put our finger on it, but we're suspicious. And also you don't feel good, <laughs> right? So when you are showing up and pretending to be someone that you're not or pretending to fit in or pretending, 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 there's this sense of incongruency energetically that everybody picks up on. So in order to show up and be in alignment with who you are and have your thoughts and your feelings and your actions all be in the same vein, like they're all lined up. You have, you have to know yourself at a very deep level. And this is some of what I wanted to talk to you about today. Also, this is what I do in my mastermind group with people. Like we dive really, really deep into who you are at a very core level. 
And that core level being like, what do you stand for? Like, what are your core values? And how, what are your archetypes? And if you even know what that means. <laughs> so I love to teach people about personal archetypes because I feel like it's one of the most empowering and informative ways to really step into your power once you know what you stand for and, and who you are embodying at a deep level. So for those of you who don't know me very well, I'll tell you that there are four archetypes, there's four general principles that I know that I embody and I stand for. And so one is an artist. Being an artist, I've always been an artist. Like I, it is very important to me that my surroundings are beautiful. I like to leave things better than I found them. <laughs> and I mean, I went to art school, like my first degree is in art histories. And so it's, it's, it's part of who I've always been my entire life. And just because I'm not a working artist today doesn't mean that every single thing I do and how I see the world isn't informed by the fact that I am an artist, right? And beauty is important to me. So the second thing that I know about myself is that I'm an athlete. All, I have a lot of physical energy. I am very competitive and I have competed in sports. I mean, I have been involved in athletics since forever. That is just who, part of who I am. Now there's a shadow side to all of these things as well. And it also helps to, to know oneself and to step into your power when you know kind of what the opposite is. And, and anyone with an athlete archetype, one of, one of our greatest fears is that of not being able to use our bodies, right? The fear of aging, the, the, the intense discomfort of physical injury, right? Some people are so cerebral that it doesn't matter. Like that's, it's far down the list of priorities for them or things that affect them emotionally negatively. But as an athlete, any kind of injury, physical pain, the ailments, Take, taking you out of the game is sort of devastating. So you just have to know that about yourself. <laughs> what else? So, okay. So another archetype about me is that of an intellect. Like I value knowledge. I am always learning something else. I'm always reading something. I'm very curious about things. And also like that helps me help you. You know, so when I am researching and when I'm learning, it's because I want to get better so that I can help you get better. Which brings me to my fourth archetype, which is that of a lover. I'm very much, very much in relationship with people. Like I love people. And so it's easy for me to trust people. It's easy for me to see people for who they are. It's easy for me to be in relationships. So so those are my four things, right? And and I know those and they always they they always are there. They they permeate my day to day. And when I don't honor them, when I ignore those four principles that are so ingrained in who I am on every level, I am not in my power. I'm sad. I'm depressed. I feel isolated. Things happen to me that are not ideal <laughs> because I'm not coming from that place of love, because I'm not coming from that place of wholeness, because I'm frustrated or depressed or lonely or all of the ego story things, right? The coming from the fear. So, so the second part of this, this talk today too that I wanted to really focus on is to ask you specifically, what you're doing for yourself. And so, you know, the word self-care right now is very much in vogue. It's a lot like your authentic self and mindfulness and all of these like kind of key words that, that you hear a lot. But self, I want to posit that self-care means something different to everybody. Like I'm not talking about sitting in a bathtub with bubbles and a candle. Do you know what I mean? Like that is not, per se, self-care. <laughs> but what is self-care to you? And uh, and so, okay, so with that, I'm going to quit talking for a minute and drink. And so, Tad, if you could put up the questions for self-care, we can get a little poll going here. You bet. 
Okay, in terms of self-care, do you never have 10 minutes to yourself for a feeling of privacy? Have certain personal daily rituals, rituals that are non-negotiable? Always prioritize your health and needs so you can um, so that you can then be of service to others. So if everyone will take a few moments and vote, please. Give it just a few seconds. All right, here we go. And we'll give it another two or three seconds. Two, three, one in the poll. Share the results. Cool. Awesome. So, so yeah, so basically everybody on here has certain daily rituals. Awesome. Good. So that's, and that's really the whole basis of, of the self care idea is what do you need to take care of you? And maybe that is exercising every day. Maybe that's making your food choices absolutely non-negotiable. Like Maybe that is taking time to meditate every single day for 10 minutes. It's taking time to journal. It's, it's finding us, it's carving out the time to get your own needs met first and foremost, but first you have to know what those needs are. And so a lot of times there are things that we need to do in the world that might not be like mainstream, <laughs> um, but you have to do them in order to be happy. I'll never forget, I had a client one time, this is years ago, and she knew she needed exercise. She knew she needed exercise. She wanted to lose weight. She had all these goals and all these things. And she tried everything and she would go with her friends to different classes and to, you know, all these things. And you know what she ended up doing? <laughs> she ended up roller skating. Like, Seriously, this is a woman from Colombia who was in her mid forties and she found roller skating, like the four wheels roller skating. And she would go almost every single day to the roller rink and dance and roller skate. She lost all the weight. She had so much fun. Like who would have thought that was not in my arsenal of things to at all um, recommend, but, but she found it. Because what was important to her, movement, music, self-expression, and kind of like that feeling of freedom that happens when you're in motion. Running wasn't it, but roller skating was. <laughs> so there's always something, right? There, there's always something. And, and that kind of goes back to this feeling of, of power, like of, of maintaining your personal power, because when you're focused on the benefits of something, when so in this instance, when you're focused on the benefits of exercise, it allows you to keep moving forward and keep trying new things, as opposed to the potential costs of it, like, ah, oh, I'm tired, I'm, I don't wanna get hurt, I don't like to be sweaty, I don't have anyone to go with, I might fall down, I might this, that other thing which which makes you like step back and avoid different scenarios so that's just one kind of funny example of not focusing on the potential costs of falling on your butt while you're roller skating but instead assessing the potential benefits of trying something new that might actually work moving forward so that feeling of power then extends into feeling healthy and feeling energetic and and all of the places, but so self-care, right, is knowing what you need. Maybe it is taking quiet time to read every day. Maybe it's always having a trip on the calendar. Maybe it is, I don't know what it is, but for you, there is something that you need to always be doing for yourself first and foremost, in order to feel congruent with who you are deeply archetypally as a person, and how you're showing up in the world. So one of the other, um, like kind of the third piece of the puzzle that I wanted to just briefly address today is that of career and, and a work environment. Because in the initial poll for this webinar, stress, like being able to manage our stress was one of the questions that I had asked if you're interested in it. Basically everybody said, so personal development was far and beyond, like the biggest choice for anybody, which I think is amazing. And of course that means something different to everybody, but, um, but stress management was also up there. So when we think about 
stress. Here's what we know, right? When we think about stress, we know that stress causes disease. We know that inflammation causes disease. We know that the stress response can be beneficial when it comes in small doses, right? So like exercise is a form of stress. Riding a roller coaster is a form of stress. Having a deadline for a report or a presentation is a form of stress, but it's what's called an acute stress because it has a deadline. Like there is, there will be a time where that stress is resolved. The ride is gonna end, you're gonna stop running, the presentation is gonna be over, whatever the case may be, there's like a light at the end of the tunnel. So that's acute stress. Now there's something called episodic acute stress, which is like the next level of bad stress, which is the drama queen type of stress. And I don't mean to say that this is just women either, the drama queen thing. This is the people who can't ever find their wallet. They're always running late. There's like a trail of papers flying behind them. They're disorganized. They, they're always flying by the seat of their pants and there's always a trauma. Always, there's, there's always a fire to be put out. That's called episodic acute stress. There are lulls in those people, but they're rare. And those people sap energy like vampires from our blood. And so it's like, there again, to, to maintain healthy boundaries is another, is another, well, it's a non-negotiable for when we're talking about stepping into your power and maintaining your sense of personal power and boundaries. I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> I could go on and on there, but, but back to the stress. So, so we've got the acute stress, you know, it's going to end. We've got episodic acute stress. There are lulls, but these people are very challenging to be around. And then we have the idea of chronic stress. And unfortunately, well, it is what it is, right? Let's not judge, but I'll just go ahead and say it. Unfortunately, most people are walking around today with a feeling of chronic stress. And part of it comes from these, okay? Part of it comes from the fact that 24 seven, there is not a break from the constant barrage of news, noise, drama, screens, like electromagnetic frequencies, right? Cars, everything. The world around us has become very, very, very busy, very, very noisy. And it's very hard to truly escape away from that because we've been trained, all of the dinging and the buzzing and the, you know, the algorithms that go behind your email system and Facebook. And I mean, obviously I love Facebook. I live on Facebook, but we need to be able to step away from it as well because it creates a feeling of chronic stress. And another source of chronic stress is to say, you know, living with a loved one who has a chronic illness, like maybe living with someone with Alzheimer's, living with someone with you know, terminal cancer, living with someone who you love, who is dying, that is another source of chronic stress. Another source of chronic stress is to be in a job or a career or some kind of relationship that is very, very unhealthy. And when I say unhealthy, I mean, you show up and you don't, you don't feel seen, you don't feel heard, you don't feel significant you have a feeling of powerlessness, you have a feeling of being judged all of the time, like it is a continual swimming upstream feeling. That doesn't work in the long run. So Tad, this, is our, this was my final question for people. If you could put up the last poll, um, that would be great. And I'm gonna drink more water. Okay, here we go. Launching the poll. In your career, do you feel seen, heard, and respected? Have a general understanding of your role, but deal with conflicts on a regular basis? Feel judged and like you are continually swimming upstream? Okay, give it another few seconds. Everyone would vote. Three, two, one. There we go. In the poll, share the results. I can I can see based on who's actually in this meeting that it, that this is that this is cool. So 
this feeling of empowerment, right? Of, of feeling seen and heard within your career happens a little bit later in life sometimes. <laughs> When, when you have gone through enough crap in the past to know what you are willing and you are not willing to put up with, to be able to take a stand for yourself. And, and there again, to be able to ask for what you need. So for those of you who are watching the replay of this, because there will be lots of people watching the replay, I really, really hope that you take the time also and answer those polling questions really, really honestly to gauge where you are at in your stage of development. Because guess what? There's always the next level, right? So even if you are somebody who says, yes, I totally feel seen and heard and respected in my job and in my career, what is the next level to that for you? Because it'll be different for everybody. And maybe it's taking that feeling and creating more of a mentorship role in your own life. Maybe it's taking that feeling from a job and, and creating your own business out of it. Maybe it's writing a book. Maybe it's telling your story. Maybe it is, like I said, bringing up the next generation of, of young people to be able to move faster into that feeling, to be able to explain to others the difference between social power and personal power and help them to be able to see more clearly that when they feel a sense of dominance, like when they feel judged by or less than or always swimming upstream, like always being the underdog, that's experiencing that sense of social power and dominance from others that I was explaining in the beginning of the webinar as opposed to being able to, to access those limitless inner resources of personal power. And there again, when you're explaining this to people, when, when you're thinking about it for yourself, it's like, who am I at my deepest level? What do I stand for? How am I showing up in the world? And are those things matching up? Am I showing up as the person that I know that I could be at my utmost potential? Because everything is energy, right? Everything is energy and everything is vibrating at a certain frequency. And there is no limit to what you can accomplish. There's no limit to how you can be showing up. There's no limit to your energy. It's all up here. There's no limit to what you can and can't accomplish if you can envision it. So my, my question to you today is when you sit quietly in your meditation practice, in your prayer, in your just general quiet time as you're practicing your self-care and spirituality, when you sit in the most quiet times and you think about where you could be in the future, whether that's in an hour or five years or 10 years, what does that look like to you? And maybe you don't know, maybe there isn't a vision for that. And in that case, I would ask you, take in your life as it is right now. If you wanted to improve any aspect of your life, whether it's your body, your relationships, your career, whatever it is, if you wanted to take what you have now and basically make it 10 times better, what would that look like? If your finances were 10 times better, if your relationship was 10 times better, if your body was 10 times better than what it is currently with your own baseline what would that look like? So that's your homework. That's your journaling homework from our hour of power session this morning. And I wanted to let you know that if that's the kind of work that we're doing in the Synergy of Empowered Women Mastermind Group. So this is something there again, I went to a conference in LA um, for the LA Business Journal back in, I guess, May. 
And I was so excited. I was just blown away by the level of energy in that space. There was probably like 300 women there. And all of these women were very high performing women. Like all of these women were taking things up a notch. And all of these women were focused on the improvement of their lives 10%, at least 10 times, 100%. 500%. Everybody had a different kind of thing, but everyone was focused on growth. And when you are in a room with hundreds of people who are focused on growth, you cannot help but ride that wave, right? You cannot help but ride the tide of personal empowerment, right? And growth and experience. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to create kind of on a, on a micro level, that same notion, like bring together a group of people, bring together a group of women who were all focused on personal growth, what up to, to whatever level, right? Maybe it's 10%, 100%, 1000%, 1, but everybody's focused on getting better. Everybody's focused on taking it to the next level, whatever that it was, right? Because how can we support one another? How can we put our arms around each other? Because when I help you, I'm helping me. When you're helping me, you're helping yourself. Like everything, like it's the law of reciprocity, right? Just like the law of attraction. These are things that are incontrovertible. So what you put out, you always get back. So like I said, I wanted to be able to put together a group of people who were all focused on personal growth. And so I did. <laughs> and so I ran my first mastermind group, um, the Synergy of Empowered Women mastermind group. We just finished up. We just finished up an eight week session. And, you know, during that time, women completely changed their bodies. Two women started blogs. Like one woman has a brand new business model. Another woman is going to retire. Like everybody made a change. Everybody made a change, a positive change, and it happened within eight weeks, which if you think about it, it's kind of a short period of time. <laughs> and so I want, I'm, I'm going to run this again, and I wanted to personally invite you into the next mastermind group because it's going to start next week on September 12th. So it's going to run September 12th through my birthday. So it's going to be a very special mastermind group because it ends on October 17th which is my birthday. And so I would love for you to be a part of a microcosm of empowerment, of this, this kind of like force in the world that is out there building and growing and making things better. So I want to insist, like I said, personally invite you, Tad and I actually have a little, a little sign up sheet here somewhere if you are interested in joining my next mastermind group, again, it's going to be from September 12th through October 17th. We can all sing happy birthday to me. And it's every, every single week we co I come on, it's like this, and I do a different live training. So we dive really, really deep into archetypes. Like I explained to you my four dom dominant archetypes. And by the end of the six weeks, you will be able to explain to anyone who asks what your dominant archetypes are and what your core values are and what your schedule looks like in order to facilitate all of your self-care needs, right? And to be able to say, well, I started here and now I'm here. I'm in the process of, because you're focusing on moving forward. We're focusing on the benefits. And, you know, also in the group, we also focus on the, the law of attraction, because not only did I say like the law of reciprocity is a thing, but the law of attraction is really a thing. And when you think about what you want to accomplish in the world, and that's different for all of us, and it can even be vague. It can be a feeling that you want to have more people feel when they're around you. What are the resources that you need to bring in in order to make that happen? What do you need to attract as far as opportunities, people, resources, right? What kind of social power do you need to accumulate in order to take your personal power up to the next level? Because like I said, in the beginning of this talk, there are two different kinds of power, social power, personal power, but ideally you need both. <laughs> 
one cannot be, it, it's, not one, it, it's not one or the other. There has to be both. But the dominant social power cannot be overrunning your sense of limitless personal power. They have to be running in concert. And this is the whole thing, that synergy of social and personal, the synergy of actions and words and feelings and attracting resources. And it's so, it's so empowering for me to watch this happen to you and for you. So like I said, I'm running a next, I'm running my next group. I'm, I'm, I get all excited. From September 12th to October 17th, I hope that you will consider joining me. And if you are not a group person, if you would like to have this same experience on a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one basis, then you need to contact me because that's what I do with my personal clients. Like we sit down and we hash it all out. We we sit face to face, screen to screen, right? <laughs> phone to phone. And you get to tell me what it is that you're looking for, what it is that's holding you back and where the imbalance of power lies so that we can get you balanced and moving forward quickly. Because nobody has time. I mean, who has time to sit around and rehash the past? The past is over. But the future hasn't happened. So, to sum up everything, all there is is now. And if you can come from a place of love in all of your nows, you will be coming from your place of limitless resources and nothing can stop you. I always say this, when you stand in your truth, no harm can come to you. I joke around like, by the time I was 35, like all of people's worst nightmares had already happened to me <laughs> and it didn't kill me. None of them killed me, right? The, the worst case scenarios had all gone down. But as long as you stand in your truth, no harm can come to you. All of the things around you can grow and can crumble and can come and can go. But when you stand in your own truth, no harm can come to you. So that concludes my hour of power. And I hope that it leaves you feeling inspired and feeling hopeful and full of ideas for your next step. Where are you going to go next? I would love to join you in these next steps. So please consider joining the mastermind group. Please consider reaching out for one-on-one -on -one coaching because change can happen really fast if you allow it and if you're in alignment and that's what i do help you get into alignment so tad what am i missing because i get all excited and then i forget things uh do you want to share the link with the sign up yeah you bet okay we'll do that right here in the chat okay awesome and people tad people who are going to watch the replay they can also use the same link right uh, they can, and I'll put it up on the bottom of the video when we're done. Okay, great. So anyhow, so that that is the conclusion of my of what I have prepared for everyone today. And like I said, I hope that was beneficial. There is a link in the chat now here um, to a sign up sheet for the mastermind group. If you have questions about it, or if you have questions about one on one coaching, please send me a private message or an email. My email is my name. It's Carolyn at carolynmall.com. You can even put that in the chat too. Um, and I look forward to talking to you and I look forward to hearing your story and I look forward to being a part of your journey because there is, um, there's not only safety in numbers, <laughs> there's power in numbers. So I hope that you come on board. I hope that you consider being part of the group. I hope that you reach out to me. I hope you have an amazing day.